Becky from Power Tools with Thread. I have to show you the coolest thing. This is awesome. I went to Ikea the other day and they have their, I guess, like a spa robe. They're 20 bucks, like $19.97 or something like that. And my husband and I, we have a hot tub outside and we like to wear our spa robes to go get in and out of the hot tub and I thought you know we need to have them monogrammed so <clears throat> I gotta show you this monogram it's tone on tone so I did it in white can you see can you see the beat this is the preppy monogram from designs by Juju and I didn't realize it at the time but this particular robe has a raglan sleeve and so I had to make sure that it didn't get on the raglan seam line and it didn't get here. So I am very, very happy with how this turned out. So uh, for those of you who don't have an Ikea nearby, um, I'll link to another spa robe below in this video that you can do this with. But this one, I really like it. It's good quality and, you know, wasn't too much money. So... I was going to take you step by step and show you how I did this and because uh, I need to do another one for my husband. As soon as I showed it to him, he's like, where's mine? <laughs> Isn't that just like a man? Where's mine? <laughs> I said, look, I wanted to screw mine up first, which I didn't because I'm a professional. <laughs> Gosh, you should see half the stuff I screw up. Okay, let's get started. Okay, the first thing I did was I put the robe on him to see where this needed to go. So this is the B, but the K for Keith is the same size, so I didn't make another print. Um, but what I did was, you know, you want to print out what it is you want to embroider and then place it where you want it to go, okay? And if, it, if the person's standing there, or if you don't have a person like you want to do a gift, just put it on um, a dress form, or at the very least, put it on you. Mine is on the right side because I wear my robe right over left, and he wears his robe left over right. So I had him stand still. I've already got a snowman exactly where it needs to go. I don't want to take it off because I don't want to screw it up. But... You either, need, you either need a snowman or a target sticker with crosshairs. So let me zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. Okay. So the way I, the way I do it is I put it exactly, you know, where, where it needs to go. Made sure to miss the raglan sleeve uh, hemline and the band, the front band. And... I fold it down. Let's pretend that snowman is not there, okay? I fold it down in half and it's it makes it easier if you crease your print before you start this. Makes it much easier. So you want to fold it in half on your uh, lines, on your crosshairs and then fold it in half again and just get that easy so it's ready to bend. So you get it where it wants to, where you want it to go, fold it in half, okay? Fold it in half again and then take your target sticker and slip it so that that quarter is covered right there and put that where it needs to go and remove it. That's how you put a Target sticker on from a printout. On the back for uh, what I'm going to use inside the hoop, this is Pellon 541 Wash and Gone Stabilizer. I really like it. It's a great backing, especially for something that's white, that's going to be white on the back. But um, So you want to use something, a, a Wash and Gone. I'm just using Pellon. Now, the old me would uh, use a rotary cutter to cut this off. I have my designs by designs and machine embroidery hoop mat, so no rotary rotary cutters allowed. Let me turn it this way. 
and I'm just going to give myself about an inch on either side. You can get the Pellon 541 Wash and Gone at Walmart. You can get it on Amazon, whatever you want. Now, I had a hard time hooping the bathrobe because of its bulk. So I'm just going to hoop the Wash and Gone. This stuff works really good. I really like it, and it's not outrageously expensive. Did you see how that hoop did not move on the hoop mat? It stays exactly where you want it to. I don't know what it is. This thing, this hoop mat is awesome. I'll link to it in the description box. It, your stuff does not skid, slide, move at all. I love it. Okay? But it lifts up super easy like it doesn't have anything, you know, there's no glue on it or anything. So, I am lining up my crosshairs on my mat or on my hoop with the mat. Just makes it easier. Okay? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to turn the design upside down in the machine because the bulk of the bathrobe is over here on the right. And I want it, it's not going to fit through the hoop, right, through the, through the harp of the machine. So I'm going to put it all over here. It's a big, bulky, heavy bathrobe. I got a trick though for that I'm going to show you guys and what I do is I just kind of put my thumb on the on the snowman if you do not have a camera system you're going to have to be more particular about exactly hooping this exactly where it needs to go okay but I'm putting my thumb on the snowman I'm going to put my thumb as best I can on the crosshairs in in the hoop that I because I can see through the wash and gone Okay, just like that. And then I'm going to use, I just got a little bit left of this, my last little bit. This is a topper. This is sulky. Um, oh, do I have the, this is a sulky water soluble topper. It's real thin. It feels like Glad Press and Seal, but it's not Press and Seal. Not that you couldn't use Press and Seal, but it's sticky to get that off of the, uh, the main parts. Now what I'm going to do is just um, float this. Let me see if I can get a pin in here. So you just want to get this as flat as possible and taut as possible. I'm going to scoot this down just a little bit and pull this kind of taut. And you want to make sure you put your pins out of the stitching field so that it doesn't you know, I can take my little picture of what it's going to be so I can see where that's going to be stitching, okay? And again, it's not going to be a B, it's going to be a K for keep. I just didn't want to print another thing because they're the same size. So I am just hooping this and floating it. This is exactly what I did on mine and it turned out so nice. If you guys have a wedding coming up, um, you can do their initials, you can do Mr. and Mrs., whatever. It's just such a nice, pretty gift. Tone on tone makes it so upscale and nice. There we go. All right, that's good enough, I think. Okay, I think we're ready to go to the machine. Okay, so I just um, turned on the machine, and it says the carriage of the embroidery unit will move. Keep your hands, etc., away from the carriage. Okay. I have white thread already in the machine, and I have plenty of thread in my bobbin. So now I'm going to go to embroidery. And I have it on a USB stick right here, so I'm going to hit the USB sign. And it looks like it's on page two. And uh, there's the K right there. And there it is. So I'm going to hit sewing. Now, I need to rotate this. It needs to be upside down. So I'm going to hit rotate. And I'm going to go 90 degrees. And 90 degrees. There. Now it's ready to stitch out. I'm going to close that. Okay, now I want to have the snowman find it, but first I need to do something. I got to, let me back out. I have to put the hoop 
into the machine, okay? So I'm going to do that now. And do you guys, again, this bathrobe probably weighs, I don't know, a pound or two. It's pretty heavy. So let me get the hoop in there and put the little arm down or it gets all wound up and upset at me if I don't do that. Now, from experience, let me lock that, reach around and make sure nothing's underneath. From experience, I know that the weight of this, as this thing moves and goes back and forth, it's going to cause drag on the machine, which can cause a real problem with uh, design distortion, and I don't want that at all. So I'm going to show you guys something pretty cool. I have one of those weightless quilters from Designs and Machine Embroidery and it's a system that sits on the floor and it has these arms that come up and then there are clamps on it. Here's some arms from it uh, that are, they're coming up behind the table. I'll get down closer and show you this in a minute. But I'm going to use that to hold the weight of this heavy bathrobe a little thing in there I can do this and then I want to do the other this is these are the two corners of the bathrobe and now the weight of the bathrobe is no longer pulling and tugging on the design the bathrobe is going to be able to move freely I'm going to move this a little bit here to give these clamps are really tight. They work well, but they're easy to open and they have a thumb loop on them. I'll show them to you. I'll show this up close to you here in a minute. Okay, so now the weight of the bathrobe is no longer tugging or it's not going to impede the movement of the embroidery arm at all. So I learned yesterday when I did mine that the camera really can't see the snowman with the pin with the uh, topper on it. So I'm just going to pull it back just a little bit. I'm going to pull the topper back here and see if the camera can do its thing. There's the little snowman and it's going to scan. Okay. It already found it. The nice thing about this is if the design needed to be tilted at all one way or the other, it would automatically do that in the machine. So it's already found it. Remove the positioning snowman. Okay, now I'm going to put, see we got some loose here. Pull that back up. Smooth this out and get it straight again. And put my pins back in here to float this. All right, we're ready to go. You want to use a topper on anything that remotely resembles a towel so that the stitches are not buried down in. So here's the weightless quilter at work, okay? See how that's easily moving? And the bathrobe is not tugging on the embroidery arm at all. Come up here and show you the clamp. See that? Very easy. You put your fingers through that hole and then you can use your palm to open the close the clamp. And I just have that one piece of it put together. The rest of the frame is sitting there to give it balance and stability. And that's the one piece. It, the thicker pole is, that's more rigid. It'll hold more weight. It, that one's not connected at the base. I'm using the thinner of the two poles. This is how it does its thing. And either that or I'd have to constantly hold on to it, make my arms get tired. See how that thing's moving effortlessly? That's because of the use of the weightless quilter. So 
now it's getting ready to do the first uh, border on this thing and so there's going to be a lot of movement of the hoop as it goes around the design. Ignore my dog. Look at that weightless quilter. No drag on it at all. It's going effortlessly around the design. I love the baby. Okay. It's ready to come out of the hoop. Oh, y'all, this turned out nice. Look, this topper is really easy to get take off. You just tear it, it'll come off in one big piece. Really simple. And then I'm gonna, there's some other little pieces here. You can scratch it with your nail and they should come up super easy. The Salvi is very good about that. Really easy to come up without tearing up the loops of the toweling underneath do that you can always wet it down I just I don't like to do that because it'll get gluey if you're gonna wet it you know put it, let somebody else put it in the washing machine and so now I like to use my scissors my duck build scissors okay because they will keep the fabric from being cut when you're gonna trim a backing you always 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 hold on to the backing and let the garment drop okay I'm going to come in here and just real close around the stitching, I'm going to trim it. Let me show you from my side here. <clears throat> it's hard, you guys. Sorry. Left hand, right hand. Can you see what I'm doing? Yeah, it looks pretty good. Yeah. Go the other direction. Maybe you can see. See, you want that. You want the garment to drop away so that the duck bill protects the garment. See? I didn't cut a single loop on that toweling that is. Put that back. So here's what the back looks like. Very nice, very professional. And here's what the front looks like. See? Again, this is Designs by Juju, is where I got the design. It's called uh, Preppy Embossed Monogram. Oh, I think it turned out awesome. I like it. I tried to get my husband to model this for me, and he said, No, I'm busy. <laughs> he took off outside. It's like a kid. So, this is the way he'll wear it. This thing's big on me. But, there we go. There it is. You guys, a really nice spa robe and 20 minutes on the embroidery machine, and you have a very, very nice gift. So, Christmas is coming. We'll see you. Oh, this weekend, starting tomorrow, tomorrow's Friday, uh, the 23rd of August, and uh, tomorrow is the first day of the Kimberbell Embroidery.
event I'm doing at the All Brands Creative Sewing Center in San Antonio. I'm taking my camera so you get to come along with me and I think Sunday I'll be doing some video editing and get it out on YouTube so you can watch, okay? Thanks for joining me. Go sew something. Bye.